Good morning, Rotarians. Thank you for joining us. This club meeting is called to order. So uh, very shortly, I'll be sharing my screen and leading us through another fun presentation to direct the conversation. Periodically, I'll bring the screen sharing down so we can see each other's beautiful and friendly faces and have more dialogue. Family and friends are always welcome to attend our club, so don't hesitate to invite someone like maybe your metalhead neighbor that turns it up to 11. <laughs> um, feel free to speak out as you would in an in-person club meeting, but if you're not using your microphone, microphone, please make sure to put yourself on mute, or maybe I'll do it at the cost of a club fine. <clears throat> well, howdy, howdy. Welcome to the Fortuna Sunrise Rotary Club meeting for February 3rd, 2020, and that's volume 31 of my presidential year. We have an amazing Rotary Club, and I'm so thankful to be a part of it. And at this time, we'll introduce our guests this morning. Looks like we have um, our speaker today. The most excellent Tom Boylan, from our zone coordinator for public image and the newly announced district governor designate. Give it up for Tom. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And I'm assuming that is not Carol Wood joining us. I'm assuming that's Hex. So I'm going to move on to uh, the rest of this program. Thank you, the rest of you outstanding Rotarians for being here. <clears throat> So at this time, we typically be doing the flag salute. Um, but as a person who's been to a Zoom meeting where they did the flag salute and hear, heard the disjointed, uh, non-synchronous, uh, you know, flag salute, it's a little, it's a little distracting. So we've been doing an American history lesson, and today was pretty exceptional day in American history. Uh, in 1870, on this day, the 15th Amendment to the United States of the Constitution it was ratified in 1870 once again, 1870, which prohibited each government in the United States from denying a citizen the right to vote based on the citizen's race, color, or previous condition of servitude. <clears throat> uh, also, 1919 was the first meeting of the League of Nations. It was held on this day. President Woodrow Wilson was the head of this committee. The purpose of the committee was to promote international security as well as world peace. And as Rotarians, peace being one of our big missions, uh, the UN is obviously very much in alignment with our values. This uh, organization, organization, I should say, League of Nations, is now what they call the present day UN. And uh, the goals of the UN are very similar to the goals of the, the original League of Nations. Inspirational message of the day. How far you go in life depends on your being tender with the young compassionate with the age, sympathetic with the striving, and tolerant of the weak and strong, because someday in your life, you will have been all of these. Four-way test, we're going to turn it over to Dr. Greg Barkdahl. Greg. Okay, so of the things we say Actually, no, I better cheat. <laughs> of the things we think, say or do, number one, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Excellent, thank you so very much. Thanks for uh -huh. still putting the billboard up so I can make sure I have it right. That's right, good cheat sheet. Let's see. Uh, Quick announcement uh, as we're getting into backpacks here. Uh, before that, uh, no real big events coming up, but our fundraising committee is going to meet this Friday morning at 7 a.m. So if you're one of those folks who attended or maybe were on the list and didn't attend, you'll be seeing an e email from me a little bit later today that'll get you in there. Uh, Steve Garrison, I see you waving your hand there, sir. Nope. Oh. Here, I'll ask you. There you go. Uh, yeah, I just want to mention that we're up to 138 bags packing now, and I think there's more coming. Uh, I have increased the number of people on the sign up to four. So, and I, I sent that out yesterday and uh, appreciate it if everybody jumps in and signs up, takes up that four spot, because we really do need four 
uh, plus the two AmeriCorps people helping to, uh, to make it go smoothly. Um, and March 3rd, I think is the date we don't have, I think it's, I think we got one person signed up for that. So if you could take a look at that and do some signups, I'd sure appreciate it. Thank you so much, Steve. So this week we've got Buster and Lori Garrison as well as Rick Center. That's only three. Do we need an extra person today, Steve? <laughs> of course, I got to ask you after you mute there. We, we, we do because uh, I think Lori Garrison, uh, uh, his mom has a medical issue, so we're not sure she's going to be there. So it'd be nice, yes. Sir, is there any Rotarian out there that may, might be available to help out with backpacks this week? Hey, well, I think I can do the March third with Heather. Oh, Great. okay, super. Um, oh, and I think I can do um, today, this afternoon. Beautiful. Uh, might be able to drag Sherry along too. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Don. Mm -hmm. What time on uh, Thursday, Steve? Uh, it, it's always on Wednesdays, and it's 3.15. Oh, sorry about that. That's all right. So sweet. We've, today we've got Buster and Lori Garrison, as well as Rick Center, and, and we just added in Don and possibly Sherry Jewett. Thank you. Next week, we've got Jim and Debbie Scaife, as well as Sue and Don Finch. So that would be February 10th. Killer. All right. See, I'll bring down the screen share right now. Is there anybody else that's got a little message or thing going on? Any need of Rotarians? I know. I know there's there's not a ton going on these days, but just thought I'd throw it out there, see if anybody had any announcements. I, I just wanted to add that we have the district training assembly coming up and we were, the announcement was given by Dustin Littlefield, our district governor elect. So um, obviously we're not traveling to, to Ukiah or even staying here at the River Lodge, but it still will be training for, it's going to be really good for new members. And I would encourage uh, as many of us to join in on the district training assembly coming up uh, April, I think it's 7th April and 16th and 17th. Yeah, I, Frank, I was so close. <laughs> Thank you. It helps have an AG in the house. <laughs> Uh, awesome, awesome. And uh, goodness, I didn't put it into the, 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 the slide presentation, but they did roll out next year's theme too, the, the district governor's theme. So I'll probably include that in the slideshow. And who knows, maybe, maybe Tom, since he's the public image chair, will have some more about that during his presentation. Hmm. Should we keep this going? Let's do it. All right. So being an art educator every week, I'm doing a little bit of art history, talking about different artists, showing you examples of their work. And then I call on a Rotarian from our club to uh, critique, interpret, and take a look at that person's artwork and their own words. And then I find them for it because I'm such a nice guy. <laughs> so this week, we're going to be looking at the, uh, the photographer, Melody McDaniel. Uh, Melody uh, McDaniel is a, a still photographer, film director who works <laughs> with uh, equal fluency between the worlds of fashion, music, fine art, and commercials. As a teenager, she worked in a, a kibbutz and uh, apprenticed under an architectural photographer at um, Technion, which is the Israel Institute of Technology. After graduating from the Art Center College of Design with a BFA and an MFA degree in fine art photography, Melody found her first professional success producing photos for album artwork and music editorials for a diverse group of musicians. To date, Melody has directed a number of TV commercials over the years for a diverse clientele, including Nike, Target, Miller Genuine Draft, Wrangler, Chrysler, Google, Levi's, Coach, Yahoo, Uber, Facebook, and a whole bunch of other ones. So uh, pretty awesome work here. And uh, I've got three examples of photography here from her. We've got a portrait on the left of uh, a music mogul, uh, just awesome uh, person all around, Pharrell. Um, we've got this really cool framing shots, a compositional guideline where you, where you take something that's kind of um, like a frame around something. So they've got these cool little like windows to a pool there. And then uh, this very interesting character. I think he's a motocross rider in the upper right hand with a ton of tattoos. So she's really good at taking photos of people, but also with, there's some really beautiful environmental shots that she's got with, without people too. Um, and let's just keep going, shall we? Let's do it. All right. The Compton Posse. So, so 
um, Melody took a lot of photos of this group and I thought it was very interesting. So mainly on this slide, I'm gonna talk about the group a little bit, but then relate it back to her photography. So the Compton Junior Posity or CJP as they call it, uh, was started by uh, Maisha Akbar over 20 years ago. And it was created to inspire inner city youth by providing a year round equestrian program. And I thought the commonalities between this and Wild Souls Ranch was pretty outstanding. So I kind of went on a tangent down this, this pathway. So go with me now. Um, their aim was to encourage children to reach personal academic and career, go career goals by offering them a powerful alternative to the lure of gang and drug culture. The CJP has helped three generations of children probably more like four or five by now, um, uh, to get into college, the military, and to become business owners. The Compton Junior Posse's, uh, jun junior Posse's award-winning program was given inner, has given inner city kids a framework for success by teaming up with horses, highly skilled coaches, such as Olympic gold medalist Will Simpson. By exposing the kids to an equestrian lifestyle, they learn to develop responsibility, discipline, build self-esteem, and this is an important program to nurture those Compton youth to become leaders of tomorrow. And um, so this is a great example of an artist who's doing all this professional work for big names, but then also kind of giving back to the community by going out and taking photos of this group to publicize it and kind of get their message out there more. And what a better way to do it than, than her awesome images. So we have a, a horse jumping over, goodness, and I don't know much about equestrian stuff here, but <laughs> jumping over some kind of hurdle, um, really beautiful shot. I love the action in it. Um, follows what they call the rule of thirds composition, right? The horse jumping on that third line. We've got a beautiful, very symmetrical shot of the horses walking down a, like with a parade or something. And then a very cute little girl there with an award that she uh, <clears throat> got for participating. So awesome program. Um, and it was really awesome to see her partner with them and, and do some awesome photography for them. Okay, last slide where I call on a Rotarian. And I think I've gone through just about everybody that's here this morning. So I'm gonna double back to one of our first uh, Rotarians that we called on to critique artwork. Frank Ramos, our assistant gov governor. You there, my friend? I'm here. So, so hey, take a look at this gorgeous, gorgeous portrait that Melody McDaniel did of Chadwick Bozeman, um, And it was for Esquire magazine. And tell me a little bit about it. What do you think? Well, it's kind of different from the other pictures since this one's in color. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm intrigued by the by the piano that looks really weathered. You know, he's uh, he's all dressed up. He's uh, smiling. It looks like they're in. I, I, there might be water down there. I can't tell, but uh, yeah, it looks like that's kind of something that they found or something that a piano that's been found and needing a refurbishment. Uh, but uh. Yeah, so it's kind of intriguing. I, I definitely like the, the, the black and whites always give a little bit more. Uh, yeah, there's something about the black and whites, especially with the clouds there. But uh, this one uh, just seems to be more of a, a uh, non-stage portrait like the, uh, than the other ones. Uh, this one's kind of like more staged, I think. Uh, yeah. So, uh, to be honest with you, I prefer the other ones than this one, okay. uh, mainly because I, I'm more partial to black and white, and this one just seems like it's uh, a little more staged, in my opinion. Totally. So, do, you, do you recognize this, this famous person here playing? The I game? don't. No? Okay. It was the, the star uh, uh, of the Black Panther series, and uh, he was also, gosh, a whole bunch of movies. I think one of his last films was The Five Bloods, a Spike Lee Joint um, passed away very, very young. I think he was in his 20s, so. Um, oh, is that the guy from um, the the other uh, thing? Yeah, no, I'd, I'd never watched it, so I, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's it's he all right. Just, he just yeah. got a Golden Globe nomination this morning for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Oh, wow, cool, Aaron, thank you. Tying it into some very relevant news, too. So, uh, Frank, let, let's get back to your critique there. I think it was pretty fantastic. You talked about um, how a lot of her work was black and white. So you're identifying kind of a stylistic approach that the artist had and then saying how this kind of breaks from that. 
looking at the other photos that were a little bit maybe more candid and a little bit less posed, this one definitely very much more posed, although he isn't looking directly at the camera. So it gives you kind of a feeling like maybe they were there for a pose shot, but then there was kind of a moment where they were talking and, and maybe uh, the photographer distracted the model just a little bit enough to, to kind of look in a different direction. I really love how you pulled, uh, talked about texture, right? Textures and patterns. You didn't use those words specifically, but you talked about the wear on the piano, which is a key part of this, right? The juxtaposition of the kind of nice, well-groomed actor model on, on the left-hand side, smiling, young, and this old weathered piano on, on the other side. So pretty good, you know, maybe just connecting those little pieces a little bit more would have been fantastic, but I think you did an outstanding job. Frank? How about a ten dollar fine? Can you handle that? Sounds good. Awesome. Frank, Frank, are you not in the uh, Century Club? I believe I you am. Are. Go ahead and put it towards uh, Polio. Oh, ten bucks to Polio. Thank you very much, Frank. Or, or he could give it to somebody else, but the, the fine now. He's he's too good of a guy. All right, let's see here. Uh, before we get into this week's weekly recognition, is there anything anybody wants to share? Any guilty consciences out there? Um, fishing stories, Greg Bartle. And I see Jeff Nelson with a hand up. My um, oldest daughter, Emily, turns 10 this week. Oh, wow. Awesome. Well, I'll throw in $11. $11 for Emily. Thank you so much. And how, how close is Greg getting to the Century Club? Apparently not very. <laughs> it's because you've been given to all these other things thank you so much you guys yeah change the accounting rules on me <laughs> yeah he's uh he's quite a ways away okay like painfully far away May, maybe like I'll... almost dead last in the club Ooh. <laughs> like so far down he might even be in a different club he's so that's so far back ross 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 no no he you're, he's, great he's... You're, you're now at 51 dollars. so there he goes after Further than halfway with that extra one buck there with the lemon. Nice, nice going. Jeff Nelson, I think I saw your hand up too. You got something you'd like to share? Yeah, I've missed the last couple of meetings. I had some computer problems, but in all honesty, I kind of enjoyed sleeping in. So I didn't uh, try very hard to, to uh, come up with a backup. So why don't you hit me for 10 bucks for each of those two meetings? Okay. So and as long as I'm finding myself back to the art and the uh, featured artist this week. Yeah. And I, again, I missed the last two, but what struck me was there was no bright red in it. <laughs> yeah. It seems to be, uh, Simon, your, your go-to. If, <laughs> if it's not red, it doesn't usually make the screen. So I was a little surprised. I, I do love some red in art. That is true. You've got me pegged. I've been trying to get out of my little box though with these, these things and switch it around. So, yeah. All right. So yeah, hit me for the two <clears throat> tens, 20 bucks. Uh, all right, two tens, so 20 bucks total. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Yeah, okay. All right, well, let's go, let's go a little further, shall we? So, so, so not every week, but, but a lot of weeks, I've been drawing a character of a club member and talking a little bit about them. And you can see the gallery here of, of all the characters from our club that I've done so far. I'm going to feature a Rotarian this week. Who do you think it will be? Dramatic pause. Hmm. Okay. Seth McGrath. Hey, hot dog. Look at that guy. I put you in an old, old school uh, grocer's outfit. Look at that. You're looking sharp. Remember when they used to wear suits and ties at the grocery store? That was probably in John Sapper's years, maybe. Oh, no. I started in the grocery <laughs> business I wore a shirt and tie every day huh oh cool sweet yep. so, so there you are and you're in your nice little shirt and tie and if I was going to define Seth I'd use three words charitable driven and community minded so let's dig into it and see what the hubbub's all about Seth charitable Seth it has only been a member of the Eel River Valley for a little over five years, uh, by my count. I might be a little off on that. And uh, yet has already made a name for himself as being one of the most giving individuals. Um, 
just about every local event, school fundraiser, youth club, anybody else needing help with their cause, Seth McGrath is willing to help. And not only does he model his altru altruistic spirit to his three kids, he is the last person to advertise how much that he really gives to our community. That philanthropic spirit that Mr. McGrath has is what makes him an outstanding Rotarian. And we've got some really cool uh, photos of his family here. Uh, I think it looks like a turkey drive at, at a store grocery outlet there. You know, um, the, the youth auctions uh, every year, you know, working around the store, just fantastic charitable altruistic gentleman you are. Thank you, Seth. Oh, hey, let's zoom in on that picture. Uh, driven. Whether it's catching a monster fish, winning golf tournaments, getting acknowledged as business of the year, Seth is focused and driven to be the best version of himself. His unwavering drive makes him a fantastic business owner of Grocery Outlet and Fortuna, a past president of the Fortuna Chamber of Commerce, and a guy who holds his hands way up when plummeting down the sheer drop of Splash Mountain. And let's not forget, you can also knock out a project around the house with nothing short of excellence. It is no wonder that his eldest son is an advanced student at Fortuna High's Woodshop. Obviously that apple did not fall far from the tree there. And community minded. Seth McGrath's brain must be hardwired to serve the community. He has sponsored countless events, influenced the youth when speaking at local schools and in a family with multiple school board members, and also even cooking large quantities of chili on Main Street during Fortuna Rodeo's chili cook-off. Seth, in the short time that you have blessed our area with your presence, you've become a fixture in our community, an asset to our club, and a mentor to the youth. Thank you for your service above self. So everybody, let's give it up for our club's very own Seth McGrath. Seth, my friend, that Thank stellar <laughs> illustration right there has to be worth as much as several frozen pizzas. How about a $20 fine? <clears throat> That's fine. <clears throat> That's good. Thank you very much, Simon. That was uh, very well done. I'm very humbled by that. Oh, you bet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a member of our club. Thanks for being a member of our com community and just coming out swinging with, with, with everything you do. It's just so very appreciated. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. And we'll move on to our weekly presentation. I'm going to stop the screen share and hand it over to Aaron Dunn, our program chair, who will introduce him. Thank you, President Simon. I'm going to introduce Tom. We're going to do a little bit of a different format this morning. I'm going to do a Q&A after I've introduced him. And I'm so excited to have Tom Boylan here today. Since joining Rotary in 1997, Tom Boylan's service to Rotary includes more than nine years as the district public relations chair and another four years as the webmaster slash district communications officer. In addition, he's been a member of the Rotary Zone 2627 public image team since 2013 when it started. Today, he's a member of the Zone Communications team. Tom is a member and past president of the Rotary Club of Windsor. He is the owner and creative director of the traditional and digital marketing agency, Boylan Point, located in Santa Rosa, California. The Boylan Point Agency provides online support and print development for a variety of rotary training materials and assumes the role of webmaster for Zone 2627 and Rotary 5130. As a former contract writer, editor, and columnist for several New York Times owned publications, including the Press Democrat, it's no wonder his rotary passion is focused on literacy and education. Tom lives in Windsor, California with his wife, Melody, and their combined families include three sons, three daughters-in-law, and four grandchildren. And uh, Tom is a, you can't have been uh, working with Rotary in the district without knowing Tom because he is the, the go-to guy for all things public, relation, public relations. And now he is our district governor designate which means he will follow Jennifer Strong. I'm not sure of the exact years. I know Tom will tell us. So Tom, welcome this morning. I knew uh, since you are in a morning club, I didn't realize that the alarm thing was going to be um, 
a, a challenge for you today, but we're really glad you beat me here. So I, you did great. So I think we'll just jump in with rotary things and we're going to kind of divide it between rotary, professional, public relations, district governor designate, and whatever you, if you want to go off on a tangent, you're welcome to do that. So kind of just curious about what's going on in the world of rotary public image now, today. <coughs> Um, I mean, for me, it was really, it's interesting. I'll go back a little bit. Thank you very much uh, for the intro and that. And thanks for having me. And you know what? Um, my Rotary Club, uh, that extra 15 minutes means that I never have to have an alarm. And I was there yesterday, fantastic speaker. Um, but, um, you know, unfortunately, I mean, you're not going to have that guy today. But, um, <laughs> but I did get to sleep in and I thank you very much. Um, so I got into the uh, public image. Actually, it was, I believe, your year, Aaron, um, when uh, I was approached by someone at the zone uh, who said that, and, and for those who don't know, I mean, we have a club, the club's part of a district, the districts are uh, a collection of districts that actually create a zone. And the Western United States is uh, zone 26 and 27. And um, I believe there's over 30 uh, districts that we have. Um, and I was asked in 2013 to step in because Rotary was trying to create this whole new brand. Remember, we were all just the wheel, you know, for the longest time. And then uh, Rotary uh, had a big study done. And that study came back saying, hey, if you don't start putting the name Rotary on there, that was one thing. Um, change the logo so that people know who we are. And then the other thing that they were talking about was uh, our voice that we basically, Rotary had always, you did it in the back room, you know? I mean, you didn't have to go out into the community and say, look what we did, you know? I mean, you guys are providing backpacks and food, you know, for the uh, for people who are in need. And it's like, you don't have to go out into the neighborhood. I mean, this is 10 years ago, even. Uh, you didn't have to go into the neighborhood to say, hey, look what we did. No, that's not where it came from. Rotary came from the heart. We just did it. It's service above self, right? However, what they found out back in 2012 when this study was released is that Rotary is losing its share uh, and share, I mean, members, uh, because other groups that are competing for those same people who would step up, do good service uh, deeds, service projects, and be able to uh, um, make the world a better place. Those organizations had regrouped created these marketing game plans and were trying to pull in the people that would basically be the people that we would go after. And they suggested that RI needed to make a dramatic change with regard to our voice. We had to use our voice. We had to actually tell people, hey, we're Rotary and this is what we do. And if we started to do that, <clears throat> we had a lot of old school. Uh, I'm, I got into Rotary in 97. I came in at an invite. Um, there's been a lot of changes, but the old school stuff was, I didn't mind not taking credit for, you know, putting shoes on uh, kids' feet, um, but I understand what they're saying. All of a sudden, we were losing the ability to say that we're a worthy organization, and this is the one that you ought to focus on. So we have to talk about what Rotary does, you know, and, and you probably all have seen those images of the people of action um, that uh, is their three word, just do it, uh, finger looking good. Uh, people of action. And, and that's our attempt to try and tell people, hey, this is Rotary. We're in action. We're doing really good things. So <clears throat> I got involved in that in 2013 from, uh, from the beginning. Uh, our team was a, a group of seven people that basically uh, tried to go back out to the districts uh, and retrain people like Aaron um, into you know, what Rotary really uh, could do if we all organized, if we all use the same voice, if we all put the, put the Rotary logo back out there in the proper way to be able to promote the organization. And so that was a, supposed to be a, a two or three year uh, run, right? But like anything that we do in Rotary, if you're doing a decent job, somehow or another, those three years rolled into four, then five, then six, then seven. Um, and so seven years of working with districts um, and um, clubs throughout the entire Western United States. And I truly, literally, we are, the zones cover the middle of the uh, country all the way out to the West, including British Columbia, which I think is a, a state these days, should be. 
anyhow, and uh, in Hawaii. So um, that's the distance that we cover, and that's what I've done. This past year, I was invited to uh, become one of four people um, as part of the communications team for Rotary Zone. And we get to have a really great interconnect with uh, Rotary International, with the, with the, you know, the parent company. And, um, and it's uh, it been really kind of a, a fun brain trust, although I'm still uh, caught up in the world of being a, a public image coordinator and providing a lot of information back on that end. So um, that's kind of, that's in a nutshell what, what's been happening since 2013, what continues going. You know, when I was really trying to work on the the changeover of the Rotary logo, it kind of was really happening during uh, my time of service, and it, it was so frustrating when when clubs just wouldn't do it. It's still the old logo still around, uh, and how what's the what's the latest on even that part of what we're um, what we're going through and what are the challenges that you see in the clubs are facing as far as having that public image that RI is promoting? I think um, I think we're actually doing really well. Um, you know, there's some holdouts to it, but you, you have to uh, it, actually I tell a, um, a thing when I was writing uh, for the uh, Press Democrat, I had a, a couple of different columns, but I was also I was the automotive columnist and editor for their automotive section, the driving force uh, that happened on a weekly basis. And so I had an opportunity to go out and do a lot of uh, interviews with uh, various people in that. And one of the fun things I got to do was go to the NASCAR races and hang out at, uh, at the uh, raceway, Sonoma Raceway there in, uh, down at Sonoma. And uh, I'm walking around with a, uh, um, one of the media representatives and uh, we stop at a little booth and he says, hey, Tom, um, buy that shirt. And I'm looking up thinking, I, I don't need another shirt with a logo. Uh, and he says, no, no, you have to buy that shirt, you know, and I'm, you know, Sears Point Raceway is what it was. And, and uh, I said, all right, I figured that I was just appeasing him because they were being nice to me. So I'd buy the shirt. So I bought the Sears Point shirt. That was on a Saturday uh, when they do the preliminary NASCAR races. And then Sunday, I go back to be with the big guys and walk around, get all my, my stuff going. And I walk in and the entire raceway is now in Finian Raceway. The corporation, when a corporation makes a change, they make yeah. a change. They don't do a soft rollout because they can deem that this is what we're going to do. And so that next day it became Infineon Raceway. I should have gone down and bought an Infineon shirt because now it's Sonoma Raceway. But <laughs> um, but it, it really, it showed something that everything, every sign on the track, every ticket that went out, every food booth that was there, everything had Infineon Raceway on it. It was like it never happened the day before, but yet there was this change, dramatic change happened overnight. That's and, a corporation. Uh, and yet, Tom, uh, we're, we're also stuck in the marketing world of a great amount of people still call it Sears Point. I mean, they, yeah. that's true, but you can't buy a shirt. You can't, you can't promote <laughs> Sears Point with the logo. You can't, you know, those changes. But my, my bigger point is this. That was a corporation overnight made the change. Whether or not you get the social change is different, but the physical change happened overnight. And with Rotary, we understood that we're a volunteer organization. And so that meant that we had to kind of introduce this. There were so many people who uh, were still of the opinion that, you know, well, we don't need to brag what we do. We're just going to be Rotary and then we're a step above. We're a little different than, than the other guys. But, um, they couldn't just sway them to come over right away and say, yeah, okay, fine. I'll put the rotary. Why do I have to put rotary in there? Everybody knows it's the wheel, but in reality, they didn't. The studies they did showed that that wheel actually looked like we were part of the mechanics union. You know, it's like, it was not enough. It wasn't descriptive enough um, to just have the wheel. Uh, it was an internal thing. We were a secret society at that point. But when we put in our name and we said, no, this is who we are. So this soft rollout, uh, because RI didn't want to tick off any of the clubs or the district governors at the time, people like Aaron, um, they wanted to make everybody feel comfortable with going into clubs and not having to say, okay, yesterday you were this, today you're that. So it was a soft rollout. 
And it continued and it continued. And it wasn't until seven years into it that finally Rotary said, hey, um, we're not going to reward those who continue to use the old uh, imagery. Uh, we're not going to continue to reward those who don't uh, open up to the, some of the changes that are needed in order to keep an organization going. You know, I, I have, um, I speak about this uh, brand specific to a variety of different clubs. And uh, one of the things that's really interesting is that I got in in 97 and we had 1.2 million members, right? Um, and then in 2013, when I stepped into the role with the um, RI, with the zone, um, we had 1.2 million members. And seven years into it, we had 1.2 million members. Someplace along the way, I mean, we get people, people come in and, and then some people go. Um, so there's a variety of things that we deal with, you know, the retention element on it. Um, and if you're a Rotarian, you're not supposed to grow old. We're just supposed to be there when we start and just stay there right on through. Um, you know, the problem is, is that we have not seen the growth. We haven't seen the growth as we compare it to people like UNICEF, who has an amazing amount of money that's been coming in, to uh, the YMCA or the Y as they have it now. There's a variety of these different organizations that are out there that had changed theirs and did more of a corporate change and said, you know, this is what we're going to be. Well, we're now beginning to see that, you know, we have made those changes. Our problem has been, um, you know, I don't know what's your your annual uh, uh you had a fundraiser for years uh and what was that fundraiser ours was a, a seafood boil or or various food-based uh, uh, feed. uh communal meetings crab feeds things like that yeah so so you know, and it might have been that you uh, each year you went back to the same people. Okay, you're gonna you have to promote it. You're gonna have to put out a flyer. You're gonna have to do whatever you do with it and that. And the problem was is that they were trying to get all of this change going on at the leadership level, but it really needed to trickle down to everybody has to understand and know why it's so important to change this whole brand and get into it as soon as we can. Because what would happen is like you would take somebody and you would say, okay, well, let's see your flyer for the crab boil. And then that flyer would come out and it would distort and it would use the logo in a way that, um, that still was the same because that's how we've always done it. That's how we do it. So we just do that. That's been part of the dramatic um, effort to try and change the culture of the organization because a lot of people still call it Sears Point. But in reality, in reality, it's Sonoma Raceway today. And that's what we have to do. We have to look at it and think about, you know, what's is this change is good. It can only do us good because it can give us the ability to attract more people uh, into a great organization. Hey, Tom, how has Zoom changed things for, for Rotary currently and looking forward? Are they talking about anything about our remote meetings? I think uh, Zoom, um, you know, it, it's so interesting. I mean, you guys have a great, this is terrific to see so many faces uh, uh, in this meeting. And yesterday I was fortunate, you know, we had, you know, I don't know, 38, 40 people that were in ours. Um, and so uh, one of the things about Zoom is it does give us the ability to see one another. Um, and it also gives us an ability to try and bring in speakers from really far distances. I mean, I don't know, this year, I've listened to uh, individuals from the Bahamas, I've listened to people from Canada, people from, um, from uh, uh, Australia. I, it's been an amazing tool um, to be able to expand our horizons and really see and hear about what's going on in Rotary and other things, you know, uh, around the, the globe. So that's one of the things I think that, um, trying to uh, get everybody on track to the same uh, program format. You know, there's right now, I don't know, anybody in business is probably knowing that there's a, you know, Microsoft programs, there's a, um, you know, there's, there's just a variety of ways that we could be doing this. But Zoom seems to be the one that's come to the surface. I would say that um, uh, it's going to be an interesting future. And once you let Zoom into the room, there's no going back. What's going to happen, I think, for most clubs is that some will uh, prefer to still sit there with a shirt on and their pajama pants. Um, and so if they can sign on, 
I think we're going to start seeing hybrids of meetings where we're going to have the opportunity to move back into a live setting, but for some, they will still be able to come in on the Zoom. So technology, uh, we're all becoming so much more aware of technology and what, what it can do. And what about fundraising? What are, you know, we're, we haven't then, done one yet. How are clubs dealing with fundraising on Zoom? That's been, uh, we're about ready to launch a brand new zone2627.org website. Um, and on there, we're going to be addressing a variety of these different things, including uh, we have a virtual library. You can go to that library and pull up things to kind of give you pointers on how you do it. I, I think it's interesting. I uh, um, sit on a couple of other boards uh, currently, but I'm planning on getting rid of that soon because uh, uh, I think I'm going to be pretty committed to, uh, to this district. Um, but on one of those, uh, there's a group called the Engineering Contractors, and they did a, a, a Zoom um, auction and uh, had myself and, uh, and another uh, person that were the auctioneers for this. Um, I think great items that they had, although it's really strange, right, to, to put a bid in on a hotel or a, a b and or or uh, even a restaurant during this time, we don't know. I mean, you know, are they even gonna be around when it's all over in that? But that particular group raised over $40,000 one evening in a Zoom setting like this uh, because they had good products and because people believe that there'll be an opportunity uh, eventually that we get to the other side of the tunnel and uh, that that opportunity would be there. So I, I think that there's ways that we can use Zoom uh, to be able to have these fundraisers. Um, you know, I, I, we're seeing uh, uh, programs now where these crab, um, crab feeds, where it's prepackaged and brought to you. You know, if you buy the big package, we literally bring it to your, otherwise, uh, if you buy just the ticket, you have to swing by and pick up your crab and your salad and everything else all in one bag. So, you know, creative and clever ways of getting into this. I know that there's a variety of organizations that have uh, auction programs and uh, a variety of organizations that give us opportunities to raise funds. But I think that uh, uh, we can be uh, clever with it. And I would suggest that, you know, checking out the uh, virtual library for anybody who's a fundraiser uh, or on that a committee of that sort within the, the uh, club, that that might be the place to go. And in fact, we need to start doing that sharing what a successful fundraiser is um, as sitting as the webmaster for the uh, district site too, um, that I think that we need more of that on that. I think we need to be able to really promote the idea, hey, this was really good. This was a good success. And it, it brought back some dollars back in. So I think there's hope there. It's just a different environment, but everybody's got that different environment. So it's not like we're doing something, hey, look, we're going to buck a trend. No, um, this is where it is right now. Thank you, Tom, so much for being here this morning. Any final thoughts before we we head out this morning? Um, you know, I just uh, say that uh, I've worked with so many uh, district governors uh, over the years and uh, got to see um, so many people rise to the occasion, uh, you know, from your, your start, you know, and, and Simon, you know, by the way, I, I want to give Simon a shout out. Uh, anybody who takes on a club and uh, and does this and has this many people that are continuing to show up, I think you've just done an amazing job. Um, really loved your graphics, uh, and I love your your attitude and your spirit about it all. Uh, and to me, that is the, that's the power behind Rotary. And as I work with all those governors, I recognize that each of those governors looked back at people like Simon and other presidents and said, you know, the, the, you're really the, the reason that this thing can go on and, and build. If I have a goal, um, when I finally get my opportunity in 2023, so stick around everybody, uh, but in 2023, what I would love to be able to do is be able to flip the dial on this a little bit. We're all used to somebody coming in and talking to us at Rotary, right? But what I wanna do is I wanna see Rotary get out and talk to others. So the, uh, the challenge is going to be, you know, how do we get you know, some of the, the people from the Food Foundation that you're working with to show up and sit in on a meeting where we can talk about other things that we know that are going on in the world. Um, you know, there's so much that we can access and be able to talk about. I think Rotary needs to get in front of other people and continue to talk that way. It's one thing when we talk among ourselves, but I don't want that, that closed society, that secret society of Rotary. I wanna be able to take Rotary and move Rotary outside of the clubs 
and into the communities. So I, I, I look forward to it in uh, two years time uh, to be able to come in and, uh, and have an opportunity to try and meet more of the people. I love Fortuna, I've been up there. Um, I've, you know, I've graced the stage uh, over there uh, for uh, Maureen Merrill's year and uh, thoroughly enjoy my, the training sessions that I've attended and all that. So I look forward to being able to come back up and I hope when that opportunity comes that I'll have an opportunity to meet more of the community and be able to introduce them to what I think is just probably the, the greatest uh, uh, service organization in the world. Thank you. So thank you, much. Tom, so much for being here. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you, Tom. That was that was excellent. Um, yeah, I'm I'm very appreciative for the the branding efforts that that Rotary's put in. It's uh, you know being coming from a graphic design world before education, it was really when I started creating graphics for our club, it was like, oh, here's an EPS file of all the different logos you could ever want and stuff. It was, it was really, uh, uh, it was set up for success. If, if you knew, if you knew the programs, if you knew your way around the programs, obviously, but yeah, thank you so much, Tom. That was very interesting. Uh, yeah. Once again, give it up for Tom for joining us. Yeah. We, we stick our fingers up like this because clapping is kind of a weird thing and, and, uh, people that are hearing impaired that's that's the uh, symbol for applause there so uh we're gonna do a drawing that's usually the last thing we did do it for a club meeting you can win uh, untold fortunes or or maybe what 70 billions billion? millions yeah sure. 70 dollars that's close good good then my bank account count is close to billions all right, let's see. So I'll draw a ticket for a club member and then a ball. Let's see, who do we got? Oh, the old's not here today. Let's see. Who do we got? Who do we got? Frank Ramos. I guess it's my day to pick on you here. Um, what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? What ball will you get? Our beautiful uh, spray painted mayo jar here. With Center. Let's see. What's it going to be? I'm not looking. Oh man, this is just pay five dollars. There's no choice there. And we're just All right. we're hitting you this morning, my friend. Thank you, Frank, for paying us five dollars. Hey, and for for the sake of clarity, Ross, where does that five bucks go? Does that is that just go right to the club? Uh, yeah. Like he's every club thing. Well. Basically a fine, so he's at the uh, Century Club, so he can uh, be sat on someone else. Go ahead and put or, it to polio, so $15 for me total today for polio then. Awesome. Hot dog. Killer. All right, anything else before we uh, part ways this morning? Okay. Tom, thank you so very much for joining us, setting your alarm, even if it didn't go off this morning. We really appreciate having you. Thank you to the rest of the club members. Seth, thank you for being here. Thanks for letting me put you on blast this morning. Have a marvelous Rotary Day. And we'll see you next week. Fundraiser committee, Friday morning. We'll see you. Have a good one. This club meeting is adjourned. <laughs>